Okay, now that we've inspected the engine, we see that everything's cool under there. Uh, when you're looking at a used car, you want to probably look at your interior. So the first thing you're going to see when you open your door is your seats. I've got tan leather here, so it gets dirty over time. Black leather doesn't get as dirty as this. But whether it be leather or cloth, both of them can exhibit signs of wear and tear. So as you see here, I have a little patch. That's because my leather started ripping at one time and it started tearing into little bits because of when you're in the driver's seat here, you slide in and out. Over time, it starts to rip on it because Infinity designed it with this plastic piece there. So it's on their design. But when it starts doing this over and over again with your butt, it rips it. Started ripping right at the seam, so I had to patch it. But it'll, of course, you want to keep a lookout for that kind of stuff. As you can see here, I'm ripping here. Look at that. So you want to make sure you inspect for certain rips, certain tears, cloth seats, leather seats, they both exhibit that problem. So you want to be keeping a look a lookout for that. After your seats, you want to look at your panels. So the panels here, the door, the steering wheel, dash, um, everything else that you're pretty much touching with your hands. Vents, you want to make sure everything's run, working and, and moves the right way. So my panels here look pretty good. They usually start to wear here, but they're still intact. Uh, we go in here, we see that um, the vents are moving pretty well. All four vents, you want to check them all, make sure they move. You want to make sure that your dash up here and everything around here is not cracked. Everything looks good, glass here, all looks clean. You want to make sure that um, your, your, your um, speaker covers aren't cracked. Looks like the speaker covers are good. Your steering wheel too, yeah. Make sure that most of them are upholstered now, with they're, they're stitched. Make sure the stitch isn't ripping and it's all nasty. I mean, they have, yeah, make sure that looks looks really good. I've got some tear in there, but that's, you know, sun damage happens over time. Now I want to check my roof. I'm going to check my roof cloth. Both roofs are made up of cloth, so you want to make sure you're not seeing any tears in the roof. Everything looks clean to me up there, going around. I'm not seeing anything excessively ripped. Everything looks pretty clean in here. Maybe a little dirty. Every interior is going to be a little dirty, but that looks pretty clean to me. Most cars of today are chock full of electronics. Mostly everything in the interior is run by electronics. So now, gone are the days where you can roll down a window automatically with, the, with your hand on the handle or do anything manually anymore. So you really want to be very detailed in pressing all the buttons, checking all the, the electronics and, uh, and on-offs and powers and and everything that is is running electronically in the interior of your car you want to be very precise with that so uh, make sure you do that while you're while you're examining the interior of your car now I'm gonna check my windows and door locks by that point you'll have the key to the car check your passenger window if they're automatic windows down they should go down Speech and back up route. on their own Check your driver's side. Automatic down, automatic up. Good, okay, that's good. You wanna check your locks, make sure your locks work. So if you're a big music person, you wanna make sure your CD player, auxiliary port, make sure they work. Bring an iPod with you or an MP3 player. Test your sound system. I'm a big music person, so, cause I take long trips, I need my music to be working efficiently. So I have, my speakers, I turned them on when I got this car, I raised the volume up real loud just to make sure it sounds good and it doesn't sound like panels are shaking. Now over time panels did start shaking in this car and that's why you see tennis balls all over the place in here because it actually stops my panels from shaking. It's a little fix I did and it works pretty well. I'm also going to check the sunroof, see to make sure that that goes back and forth. It goes up, there we go, and you want to make sure you play with it and see it goes back. Awesome, does that too. So that's, make sure that sunroof is working if you do have that option in your car. Another thing to look out for in the interior when, uh, when searching for your car within the electronics category is your heating and, uh, and air conditioning system. Uh, so I mean, if you turn your heat on, uh, and just make the fans blow, you should be getting the heat off the engine as long as your car is warmed up. So of course make sure your car is warmed up before you do test these two systems because uh, that's the only way you're really going to know for sure. So make sure your car is warmed up, 
turn on the, the air, make sure you're getting hot air off of it. If you're getting hot air for, off of it, whether it be summer, even better in the winter, is that's good, you know? So um, whatever season you're kind of testing, you're, as long as you're getting hot air from that, that's fine. Uh, for air conditioning though, it's a little more complicated because if you're in the winter, there's cold air outside. Uh, so it, it kind of is a tough thing to test, but in the summer, you can of course test it. Fall or spring is probably the same uh, same situation with that as well. But in the winter, something that you can do to test is warm the car up and let the let it get to a certain point where you're blowing in. Turn on the air and let your let the whole interior of the car warm up real hot. Okay, then you're gonna use this button here, the recirculating, which uh, will recirculate the air in the inside. So you want to turn that on. So it'll only recirculate the hot air that's in your in the car itself. Then turn on your AC and see if that that warm air will transfer over to cold air. It might not be the most accurate way because again, I think a lot of cars do have some leaks that get air from the outside. But as long as you're feeling some kind of cold coming from the conversion of that hot air to cold air, you should be good. Um, so. Yeah, because that that button, the recirculation, cuts off sucking in air from the outside. This one sucks in air from the outside. This one brings in and transfers the air within the interior of the car. So it won't bring in any air. So that should shut off your vents and allow the the, the system to do its job and, and change the temperature of the air within the car itself. So I'd say that's the best way to test uh, if your air conditioning and heating are working in certain seasons. And the next thing electronic in here you want to make sure is working is your so you want to check your indicators here right left perfect check your hazards perfect let's check uh, my head my high beams perfect they're on another thing to look at while you are in your car is check your headlights you can turn them on fully if it's night outside or dark, you know, just give them a sh give them a check. You get out the car and take a walk around and just make sure that they are on. So, yeah, that's on and that's on. So that's good. And check all four corners. Check all your lights. You want to make sure that your your tail lights are on. Yeah, that looks like they're good because uh, those things are not cheap these days. So. Yeah, you want to make sure that headlights and taillights are working correctly. Most of them are LED a lot of these days too. They're not regular halogen bulbs. There's still some models out there with halogen. Those are pretty simple to fix, but for the most part, them those new HIDs and LED and LED taillights and stuff, you don't want them to be buying the car and they're not working, so cuz those are pretty expensive to fix. So watch out for that. Now, I'm going to check my wipers. They work well. They're going up and down. And you want to check uh, your wiper, the wiper fluid washer. So it comes, it squirts the water onto your window. Make sure that does that job too. Another electronic component in your car that you want to make sure works is a lot of uh, seats these days come with seat controls. So test out all the seat controls. Make sure uh, forward, back, up and down, how many different options are available for your seats to be customized, make sure they work, you know, make, you don't want them to be driving off the lot and your seats don't go back and forth. None of these things are mechanical anymore. They're all run electronically through switches. So you want to make sure your controls for your seats and seat warmers and everything are working fine as well. So keep an eye on that. I also wanted to add that cars that are later than my car, some even before it if they contain GPS's had a touchscreen infotainment screen. So you want to make sure probably in this area here is where they'd be. Press on them, press on the screen, make sure they're responsive to your touch. You don't have to press really hard. You want to make sure that uh, you, where you're pressing on the screen is actually touching the button you're, you're pressing and going to the right menu. Uh, you want to also make sure that your steering wheel controls, your controls on the steering wheel are <clears throat> working as well. You want them to be able to, if you want to use your volume controls, some have Bluetooth, uh, your cruise controls, When make sure when you're doing your test drive or when you're actually testing your steering wheel system, the volume controls actually work on the steering wheel and are responding to what you're pressing through the head unit. So 
check that as well. Just keep an eye on that because you don't want to be having a headache with electronics down the line with your infotainment. Lastly, in the interior here, you want to make sure you're not smelling any odd scents or anything. You want to, you don't want to, you don't want your car to be giving off a scent you're not pleased with. Could be, could be cigarette smoke. Could be, could be uh, mold. Uh, something fishy. Something weird. You don't want to be smelling anything that's out of the ordinary in your car. It should honestly just smell like straight up new car scent. It should be smelling like clean air, fresh air, or air freshener. Of course, that you usually install those things in the car so that it covers up the scent of the car while you're selling it to make it more appealing. But you should not be smelling anything odd. If you are smelling anything that's out of the ordinary, that's a red flag right there. We're going to move on to the exterior, which is the next step. Exterior of the car, the main concern is, is body quality. The body of the car, you can just inspect that by looking around very closely. Do a walk around of the car. Look at all the panels, look at everything, look and see if there's scratches, look if you see dings. Check the tail lights, check everything, make sure it looks clean to you. You'd have already checked the Carfax or auto check and by that you would know that it's not been in any accidents, but it should look clean to you. From top to bottom, you should feel really excited and good walking around your car and how nice it looks. So, do a little walk around first, inspect it, and everything should look okay. So if you've done a walk around and you inspected, you might have seen some dents and dings. Most cars come with dents and dings if they're used because they've been, been all around. So you're gonna have shopping carts hitting them. Door people parking next to people on their door, they open the door and they bang into your door. You know, those kind of things happen. They're part of the life of a car. It's tough to avoid them. So you're gonna have some dings and dents um, just as long as they're not the type of dings and dents that bother you. A car's exterior, when you're driving around, you want to feel good in. You want people to look at it and go, ooh, that's, that's a nice car you bought there. So you want to make sure that they're not bad dings and dents. I mean, I've got some touch-up paint from some scratches, as you can see here. You know, I have, I've done some touch-up myself. It's not the exact paint color of the car, but a lot of small things can be cleaned up on your own, so it's not a deal breaker. One thing you want to look out for while doing the walk around of your car is if there's any odd paint jobs. Odd paint jobs can mean that they, like paint discoloration, uh, one color doesn't match another color. All those things could literally indicate that some work was done. Now I'm gonna show you a piece on my car, which is my actual front bumper, which has been completely battered by rocks and stuff on highways. I probably should have gotten a bumper cover but yeah you see it doesn't it doesn't have a shine to it it's because I've painted it it even looks a little bit of if you look here it looks a different color than it's close but it's a little bit of a different color than the actual hood itself so you want to make sure that if you're seeing some paint discoloration you know that something's been off or something's been painted on the car and that's worth asking about when you see it okay now I'm gonna go into one of the main topics of an exterior of a car the one cancer of a car, rust. You want to be very thorough with a used car inspecting for rust. Now, rust is one of those things that grows in secret places. It, it tries to grow in areas where water can sit. So you want to be first looking under the wheel well here. This is all metal along this fender. You want to check under there because if you don't have the plastic piece here, some cars don't. They just get old and they fall off and stuff. You want to make sure that there's no water under there been trapped because it will eat away at this and cause rust. Check your wheel wells. Rust likes to chill at. So I've got my quarter panel here. I don't know if you could see it, but I have rust. It is right here, right in front. You could see it there and it's spread. It is spread from around here up to here. I've painted it trying to make it blend somewhat, but for the most part, it's not noticeable from far away and that makes me happy, but you want to make sure that the car that you're getting doesn't show any signs of bubbling or things like this. This would be pretty bad to see if you're getting a used car. I wouldn't be too happy about that, but um, be very aware of that. It tries, it starts to grow on the back and come around. Water traps up here. It's always traveling. Water travels along the wheel and it'll get, it'll start eating away. So keep an eye on that. Coming around here, I'll show you my other rust spot, but 
you want to keep an eye on any parts of the car that are metal, any body panels that are metal. So on the door here, you probably, I don't know if you could see it, but it's right down here. Right here is where the next rust spot is. It's right there. So you want to be, be careful, look carefully. I've sanded mine down. It was actually a lot worse looking than this. But I try to keep it painted. I try to keep it some form of blue because from here, I'm only about a yard from the car. It's tough to notice. You have to be real close to notice it. So you can just keep an eye out for rust. It's the cancer of a car. For them to fix literally this one here, they'd honestly have to cut it all the way out. They, they, they'd have to chop this off and put some new welded metal on there. So it's a hassle to deal with. It's money. You don't want to have to bother with that. Really just inspect for it before you buy a car. Another thing to look out for on the exterior of the car is, uh, with your paint, is sun damage. Some people get that on their hoods. Um, as you can see, my hood is pretty shiny here. It's got a good reflection. But watch as I pan up here, and look at this. So you'll see that it's very bland there. The cloud, see how it disappears? It's there, but watch the cloud when I go this way. It's gone. There it is. So I've got sun damage up there. The paint doesn't shine anymore. So you want to make sure that some, some cars, you know, through years and years of, you know, being left out in, in the sun or different seasons, the clear coat starts to wear off. You might get some sun damage. I don't have much other than that one spot there, but those are the areas that are most affected is your hood, roof, and probably your trunk. So all that stuff is metal. So keep an eye on that. And that might not be a deal breaker, but it's something to look out for. So while we're out here, we're also going to take a look at um, tire tread. Your car will most likely be on, but if you don't have it on at the time, just look under there. I would say your best bet is to turn the vehicle on so your power steering gets activated. Okay, let's give the car... And give the wheel a turn. Turn the wheel so your tire is exposed on the front there. And take a look at the treading. You want to be buying a car with good treading. You don't want to be buying a car that you have to buy tires for already. Because tires are extremely expensive. You want to make sure you've got some tread there. If this is bald, you're not going to be getting any traction in the rain. And that's not safe. So check your tires. Check your rear ones. Just put your finger in there and feel the treads. Make sure you've got some space before they hit the bare rubber on the bottom. You want to go around and really inspect your tires. You don't want bad tires. This is the one part that of the car that is in contact with the pavement and keeps you safe. So I have plenty of treading there, you can see. So you want to make sure that you have good treading. Most cars on lots, uh, if you look at the rotors, they might have some rust on them. As you see, mine have rust. It's been a pretty cloudy gloomy day today so they started to gain some rust because of the water on them it's not a big concern it's probably just because the car has been sitting here all day and it got a little rusty don't worry about that too much brake inspection you'll really be able to feel that out a lot more during the test drive and lastly we're going to take a look at rim quality you don't um again rims are very expensive too so you want them to look good you don't want your rims to be super scratched and scuffed up real bad you want them to look clean, so really inspect your rims. As you can see, I've I've got some road rat, some road rubbing here when you park the car. But make your rim, make sure your rims look good. Again, that might not be a deal breaker to you, but I like the rims that came with this car. I like them a lot, and I didn't want them to look bad. Now, I've I've damaged them, but I've tried to keep them as nice as possible. But keep a lookout for that as well.